guys, Vito. We got a long, a big show, a lot of stuff to talk about, and we don't want to go overboard. But there was a couple of things happening this week in Serie A that I would like to discuss with you. The main focusing was uh, what happened to Mike Dunn yeah. in Udinese Milan game. Uh, I know for the viewers outside of Italy, they see this. It comes like a not like a new because. Here and there, we had this problem. We had with yes. Koulibaly, mm -hmm. we had it with, uh, what's the other player from... I can't remember, but anyway. So, it's also, it comes very popular when it becomes an attack to different color skin players. Yeah. But we have these issues in Serie A that goes on and on and on every week. If you are watching Serie A every week on Italian stands, there is saying songs against Napoletani. Vesuvio burned them. They're going to die. This is, this is racism already. Yeah. But because it's towards the same race, the voice Napoletani, it doesn't get that much exposure. Yeah. But as soon as it's some different country, thank God get exposure. It, to me, it's not even racism. It's ignorance. Because Udinese fans calling uh, Maingam all the sorrows on names because of his skin color, mm. When Udinese is the team in Serie A with the most colorful players, they go. There's no Italian in the team, no. so how you could be racist towards a race that's what and then support the same race in your team? Mm. That's so to me. That's not even racism. Call them racism. It gives them credit to have a bit of brain to to think wrong way, but to think. I think they're just ignorant. When you start calling somebody a monkey because his skin color, or somebody you're gonna die, the volcano's gonna burn you alive because he's got a different accent of you, this is not racism, this is ignorance. And also is unpunished, unpunished ignorance because they feel like whatever they do understands, it's unpunished. It's time, it's time to go grab these people mm -hmm. and just ban them forever from the stadium. This is my opinion. It's time to you know, you know me, I'm a former ultras. I'm all for chant. I'm all to, to try to say something to the player to get him nervous and anything. But there is a limit. One thing he says, oh, uh, who doesn't jump, it's, uh, it's a Napoletano, or it's a Romano, or, yeah. you know, if you don't mm -hmm. clap, you're a Juventino, or whatever, yeah. you know, or even booing the team. Yeah. That's okay, because yeah. it's part of the game. Mm -hmm. But when you cross the line, when you start hoping that people dies because of their race, or because of their language, or because of their skin color, when you start calling them monkey, sheep, first of all, all respect, I prefer be a monkey to chant stuff like that from a stand. Mm -hmm. I respect more the monkey than the ignorant guy. Yeah. They call my gun a monkey. Mm. My monkey, a beautiful animal. So, yeah. my gun, don't get offended. You know, don't even worry about these people. I don't know, you know I'm never going to watch this show. But, Vito, what, what's yeah. your opinion about you that are no pro up in Italy? You, you that are Italo Australian, that you've yeah. been seeing this happening week in and week out, uh, probably for all your life, mm. from outside the border. What's your opinion about? It's one of the dark aspects of uh, Italian football, which is a shame. You know, there's the parts that you mentioned with the territorial discrimination, especially Northern Italians saying bad things about Southern, especially the Napolitani. They get it more than the Sicilians and the Pugliesi. And then, yeah, for the last five, ten years, we've seen with players of colour getting it. And, you know, they try to claim it's all psychological for welfare and all that. But no, uh, I think it's gone too far. Uh, the sad thing is in Italy, they treat it as normal. There's no way of changing it. And yes, suspension's got to be tougher. And like you said about Udinese in particular, it's very ironic and hypocritical for any Udinese fan to discriminate an opponent for the race when there are so many different players from around the world who are of colour. So And they play for Udinese. That's right. It's like me say, oh, Vito, I hate Italians. Oh, man, I'm Italian. You know what I mean? It's, uh, <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's, it's a win, it's a win yeah. contest. So to me, it's very ignorant. But we, Italy is the country where the president of the federation got disqualified from FIFA mm. for six months. Tavecchio. Yes. For racial comments. Mm. You know, we the, the, we the place where the judge disqualified a section of the stadium for racial comments mm -hmm. and politician mm -hmm. take steps into and make sure that the disqualification get removed mm. because it's not fair. 
Mm. So until people in power, and that's one of the reasons why people that knows me privately, they know that I'm a full on anti Italian football federation. I don't support the Italian national team. I don't support any sports competitive that were the Italian color that is linked to the football federation. Mm. It does not make me an anti Italian. I love the whole country. Mm. I go everywhere in Italy. I have friends everywhere. I like all the culture in Italy. But for me, I will never stand next to the Italian tricolore flags in a football competition. I will never support that team because that flag, that team represents the Savoia, represents racism, represents murder, represents so many bad things. And we have the proof. They no are one's the establishment. Action. They're the establishment. So to me, something must happen. And you know what? It's time for maybe a, a body bigger than Italian Federation mm -hmm. to step in. Maybe it's time for FIFA to say, you know what? I ban Italian club for any European competition. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. I want to take a bad punishment to teach these people a lesson. Put it this way. Well, your wife had to deal with English hooliganism, hooliganism in the 80s and they had to ban them for five years from all European competitions. But what happened in England, if you understand, and you call somebody a monkey, you get grabbed yeah. and there is cell yeah. straight away in the stadium. They put mm -hmm. you in that cell and then you get judged straight away. And yeah. the latest, the latest you can get, you get a life ban from the state, from sports competition. Yeah. In Italy, slap on the wrist. No, way. they they come with communicato. Now they <laughs> few days they're gonna talk on TV. Yeah. Uh, you know, I remember Kulibali. Kulibari got suspended mm. for walking off the pitch after the old San Siro called mm. him a monkey. Yeah. So instead to punish. The aggressor, we punish the, the, um, victim. the victim. Sorry, thank you. Uh, thank God I got him, my PR guy. <laughs> now, I got a, I don't know if you guys, if that, that comes in TV, I apologize. You know, it's uh, Gabriele didn't do his job this morning. He didn't go around and put oil in the chair. It's a WD-40. But anyway, Vito, f you, I'll let you finish off because I'm really boiling when it comes down to this. Because yeah. I'm against racism, you know. I'm against victims. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a walk. I'm not a, all rainbow and unicorn. I understand the wordy stuff. Mm -hmm. I understand that you cannot be likable to anyone, to everyone. I understand that if somebody doesn't like me, I don't care. I turn around and move on. Yeah. But there has to be a way to stop ignorant. If they're ignorant, lock them in. Don't let them near us. No. You know, that's my opinion. Yeah. That's it. You yeah, agree with me? Not, I yeah, like it. I'll just shoot him. <laughs> yeah. no. uh, can't fault anything you've said. Thank you, thank you. So, but guys, we need action. That's yeah, it. guys, you know what? Well, send us a message. Tell us your opinion. You know, if you're on on our Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube channel, or even if you watch this video, you can send us an email. We would really like to know your opinion about this because I think like it will become a joke for the rest of the world. Yeah. You know, and every time there's something like this, everybody talking about Italian to be racist. And I know Italians, we're not racist. Mm. I go everywhere. You know, when you say people from the north pick on people from the south, yeah. every time I go to the north, they treat me like one of their brothers. I went to Veneto. Yeah. I went to Trieste. Yeah. I went to Verona. I went to Al Alto, Alto Adige. There's nothing more Sutirol. northern than uh, Sutirol. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Sutirol. But, uh, I went to Trentino Alto Adige. I think that's the northest place in Italy. Yes. And then become Germany after that. Pretty much. And they treat me like... Like uh, like their brother, yeah. it's the minority or ignorant people. Mm -hmm. They think that uh, uh, they take their frustration out on the football stand, yeah. and they think they're gonna be unpunished. It's like like the eaters on social media. Oh yeah, they think you're, because you're behind the keyboard, no one can touch you. Yeah. And the same thing, I'm on the stands in the crowd, no one can touch me. <laughs> Give to them. Yeah. All right, uh, I think we just gave you a headache with all this stuff, but it's uh, something that we really want to talk about. If you watch the show till now, thank you very much for watching us. Uh, this segment also is going to be on YouTube, so please remember to subscribe, follow and share Alpas Grow. And also remember, if there's only one place where you can watch Serie A and Serie B, and this is in Global TV in conjunction with Bean Sports. We'd like to thank you again uh, from Gabriele, from everybody, Cultural Talk, Behind the Scene, in Studio. Thank you always very much for your support and for watching us. Ciao. Yes. Ciao.